Hey gang, Lou here from Jersey Shore Fabricators. 2005 Mercedes-ish Sprinter. Uh, <clears throat> customer saw our video on doing a Raptor liner on another motor coach. Liked the way it came out and now wants the same treatment on his. Problem is, this isn't a brand new van. This thing's got 285,000 miles on it. So we got some rust issues to take care of. I'll bring you in closer, but you can't see from there. The hood is full of chips and touch-up paint and kind of looks blah. Uh, the plastics you can see are all faded out. So the plan is, go through this van panel by panel, all the way around, the hood, the front here, do all of that in black Raptor liner, and then we're also doing all the plastics so that everything is, looks new. I don't care what you got. If you have faded plastics, it, nothing ages a car more than that. That and faded headlights. Okay, you make the newest of cars look like an old, well, POS. So let me take you around the van and give you a quick tour of what, what all we're doing, and then, well, let's dive into it. So like I said, when we look at the hood here, you can see all the defects right here, 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 here. That's all touch-up paint from rock chips. So I'm going to sand the whole hood down and then go ahead and, and shoot that with the Raptor liner. I said the front bumper <coughs> looking pretty ratty. Down the side, I got up here inside the wheel well. Right along here. All right, that's looking pretty rusted. So we're actually going to take the mud flaps off, take the wheels off, come down the van. Here's some rust repair that the uh, customer tried to do on his own. It's not a bad job. Let's see how solid it is. It's all scratched up down the side. Uh, apparently, varmints are trying to get in. Uh, <clears throat> these plastics here. I mean, now, just look at this. Look at this from the back. Over the wheel well is one color. The mud flap's one color. The rear bumper's a different color. So we're going to make all that black Raptor liner. All along the back here. Sorry about the no light. Down here behind the mud flaps, we got some crusty stuff going on. You get the idea right there okay so and then the other thing we're gonna do is in the back you have the fender flare in the front there aren't any so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up this line here and extend that down to make this look like the back like we did on the last van that we did now, if it sounds like it's cold it is it's uh, I don't know, 27 degrees tonight. I'm waiting for the old heater there to get going. Here we go. All right, so. Get position here. All right, so when we look at the front fender, everything here is pretty good. All right, but as soon as we get back here to the body panel, it's a part of the chassis of the vehicle, it's a unibody. We've got some pretty gnarly rust going on around here uh, all the way down. Now I've already gone and removed the wheel and removed the mud flap just so I get a better look at what I'm looking at. So now I'm going to take the sander and I'm going to start sanding all this back and I could already see stuff flaking off. Now this is another customer that's on a bit on a budget so we're going to have to do the best we can with what we got. But, you know, here's the thing. I mean, this van, I mean, it might be worth ten or $15,000, okay? You know, like I said, it's got almost 300000 on it. It is a diesel, all right, but uh, it's still a van with 285,000 miles on it. So, <clears throat> to put six or 7000 into fixing all this properly uh, is kind of out of the question, you know, and, and understandably so. So again, we're going to do the best we can with what we got. See if we get a few more years out of this for this guy. 
uh, you know, and then at that point he can make a choice. And my feeling is, is that there's a scene here. The inside of this quarter is actually wrapped around here. That's the seam you see here, and then there's a bunch of seam sealers. So water's gotten in there, and it's starting to rot everything out. So I'm going to see if I can strip everything back, get to the seam, re-seam seal it, treat this rust. Hopefully I don't have to replace any metal with this. Uh, and then we can carry on. So, here we go. Well, my first impressions is I'm seeing shiny metal under here. So it may not be as far gone as I thought it was. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about when it comes to rust and it never sleeping. So, looking from out here, this is the fender, right? Right, there's the front bumper, right? So here's the fender. So, <clears throat> I wanted to, I don't know if it picked up in the video before, but this was really crooked. Okay, so all I did was take a body hammer and try to knock this back into shape. And now we got these two big divots missing out of the fender here. So like I said, there's two pieces of metal here that are welded together. So there's a piece behind and a piece out here. <clears throat> so... Looks like I'm going to be cutting out metal and welding in more metal. Okay. Okay, so... I don't know how much the... My phone is going to pick this up, but... Let me show you what's going on here. You see this seam right here? Okay, so that's the inner part of this fender well. The hole out here is the outer part of the quarter panel. Okay, so you have an outer fender well, quarter panel. It's welded to the vehicle, it's a quarter panel, not a fender. This part on bolts, that's a fender. It's a quarter panel, so I went and cut everything out that I needed to. So now at this point, <coughs> I'm going to weld a new piece on here for the inner structure, and then I'll make another piece to go on here for the outer structure. Grind it all smooth. And Robert's your father's brother. That takes care of that. Now, there's no real trick to doing this. It's just a curved piece of metal. So I'm not going to walk you through fabricating that. Um, it's pretty simple. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this cut out and weld it in keep moving because like I said it is uh, a little beyond cold out here oh and then the other thing that I'll do is like if you look here uh, let's see. there we go so if you look here mm -hmm. that's a spot weld that's a spot weld so I'll put holes on the outside of this piece to spot weld this back uh, this outer piece to the inner piece here just like it was. It's not just gonna be held on around here. Make sense? All right. All right, so <clears throat> a few minutes later, let me show you what's going on here. So again, we're dealing with the inner structure here, right? So this is the patch panel right here. It's just laid in place. All right, so I'm gonna get that welded in and then I'll come back and where my finger is moving over here I'll trim that to match everything else on the inside. <clears throat> and then I'll start working on the outer piece. All right, now at this point, I copper welded the inside, the inside and the underside of this piece. Now this piece here is the outer for the actual fender. So I just have a tack welded on. I got the holes in here for my plug welds. So. I'll finish weld this all the way around, then I'll plug, I'll pl do the plug welds, grind all that smooth, sorry about that, and uh, well, that'll be ready for some epoxy primer and seam sealer. Uh, seam sealer is going to go on the inside, just like I did from the factory. There are four spot welds that were here that I removed, so there's four spot welds that are going back in. In the body shop world, as you may have heard, uh, or not, maybe not. In the body shop weld, whatever welds you take out have to go back on uh, in order to be considered a proper repair. So, go ahead and get that zapped up. 
All right, so a new piece is welded in. All right. So I got my plug welds all done. Everything is done, dressed. The only thing left to do is epoxy prime and a little bit of seam sealer in here where the join is, just like the factory did. And that'll be ready. Now, that was the easy part. Back of the van, we had a whole different set of issues. So now, this is the rear quarter of the van. Behind the mud flap, there is a big old hole in there. And Mercedes was brilliant, and they used pop rivets to hold these mud flaps on. So anything to make my life a little more difficult. So I'm going to get this torn apart, and I'll show you how bad it is. Alright, so I think you guys can see what I see. <clears throat> Never mind my partner back there making all that noise. Alright, so... I got this big hole here. And the way I test things... we're cutting out of this. All right, gang, so next project on this pile of a Mercedes. Customer gave me a 12-foot roof rack and wants to cut down the fit on top of his van where the air conditioner is and the fantastic fan. My wife comes out. So, <clears throat> decided to cut it down. About like that. Now, the issue that is going to come up is that these holes where the crossbars go have to be re-drilled. And then down on the bottom, there's holes for the actual clamps, the gutter clamps that go in the van. So those have to be re-drilled. And then it has to be welded and it's galvanized. So, of course, that has to be taken care of and prepped properly. Uh, and then I have to cut the 90s off the other side and attach them here where my foot is to finish it off. But other than that, this is a piece of cake. All right, let me get the cutting. Okay, I did it again. Create something fantastic? Well, yeah, but more importantly, I forgot to hit the record button. Can't accuse me of being smart. So basically, the whole thing I was going through was that these 90s, that were already on the ends of these pieces that I cut. I left them in place. The long piece that we cut these off of, that's this. All I did was cut it down to fit here so that they are both symmetrical to each other on both ends. 
All right, make sense to everybody? Okay, now, what I went over when I was supposed to be videoing but didn't was this. If I didn't mention it, this is galvanized steel. All the galvanization has to be ground off. I use a 24 grit disc on a sander like this. I get all of that off before it welds. If you try welding it with the galvanization on there, you're gonna have a bad day, all right? It's gonna screw up your breathing. It's actually gonna create a poisonous gas. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel the edges where it's gonna be welded. Why are you gonna do that? Well, so that the weld bead penetrates down inside here, okay? All right. And also when I do my butt weld up here, over here obviously, all right, so that the weld bead penetrates down inside here, and then I can come back and sand that or grind that smooth, right? And you won't know that there's a weld there. Now, because these are getting coated with Raptor liner, well, we don't have to get that close, all right? But, you know, the best practice is that kind of thing. Then after that, the whole, these old pieces get sanded and they'll be ready for liner. The only thing left to do after this is the crossbars that the spreader bars that go in between. We have to put those in and tack those in. Then the whole thing's gotta go on top of the van. And then we gotta use the mounting system that comes with it to determine where to drill the new holes on the bottom uh, for the uh, clamp hooks, if you will, and then put the clamps on the van. So, well, basically, all that's left is everything. All right. That's all that takes. Get it going the right way there, rookie. Okay, now, sew this with fire. That'll do. Okay, so now I'm gonna get out my square, <clears throat> lay this out with the spreader bars, tack weld in the spreader bars, and uh, I'll pull the van back inside, hoist it up there, and see what it looks like. Okay, so I hit the record button this time. So now the last thing left to do is that these holes for the spreader bars don't match up. Quiet on the set. It's all right. Come on. So, <clears throat> center punch. I'm gonna make my marks. Drill a pilot hole, and then we're gonna use this big honking guy here to make these holes. What's going on, man? All right, so real simple. Pilot hole, big hole, ATF. Now, if this goes the way I think it's gonna, the set screw in here is gonna let go, and this thing's gonna move all over the place. Without a hitch and everything's gonna work great. Okay, one more time.
good thing he put that oil on it so it went through the hole. That's the other mark that works here, by the way. Occasionally. All right, so there you go. Bunch of holes, and then what I'll do is the plugs that just came, I just drilled out will go to fill in the other two holes we're not using. Brilliant, right? All right, just to give you a quick overview. <clears throat> here it is on the ground. Crossbar is installed. 90s are tacked on there. Everything's pretty symmetrical. I'm not really worried about the bars being centered. It's more holes to drill in it. Um, this is probably just gonna get a rooftop car carrier on it anyway. So a couple of straps on each end and uh, down the road you go. But I gotta tell you, I'm pretty happy with how symmetrical everything is. Okay, now I gotta get it on the van and do some welding. All right, so we got the truck jacked up, wheels are off of it, all the metal work's done, getting down to the end. So the only thing left to do now is clean it, tape it, sand it. Now we're gonna tape before we sand so that we don't get into what's the good thing. And the reason why we're gonna clean it first is so that the tape sticks to the car. All right, the last thing we want is to have crappy lines. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with that. All right, as a quick note before we go ahead and clean it, this is where the best of intentions sometimes doesn't always do the best. So here you can see the line where the factory plastic was for the wheel well opening and then this is where the mud flap was. Well if you look down here the mud flap is actually worn down to bare metal. So that's where this thing was rusting out from on the other side. Now fortunately like I said all the other metal work is done. This is easy enough we'll sand that little epoxy primer and then uh, it'll be ready for coating. But if you have mud flaps on your sprinter, take a look for something like that. Um, you know, a, a little rubber gasket or uh, door edge molding on the inside of your mud flap, you know, where, where, where this curve would be, uh, would prevent this from happening. All right, uh, the other thing that you could do if you don't want to go through all this, 3M sells a spray-on product, comes in a can, it's called Rock Guard. Okay, and it's that crinkly finish that you see on the bottom of cars from the factory. Uh, it's a clear finish, uh, but it's very, very tough. So you can take off your mud flaps, take off your plastics, and spray everything underneath them with that. And then put your plastics back on. Could prevent this from happening. And uh, well, as you saw, you know, getting holes inside of your van. All right, gang, so here's where we're at. It's loud in here. I got a torpedo heater going. I got the heater going behind you. Van's masked, bagged, sanded, prepped, cleaned. She's ready to go. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and mix up the Raptor liner uh, and add the black paint to it. And uh, well, let's let's get shooting. Okay. So over on my table, I've got three liters of Raptor liner. I mixed in some. I mixed in four ounces of black 99K uh, Chroma Base because uh, I got the technical of the liner by accident. So I'm going to go ahead and put the hardener in. I have my air pressure adjusted down to 80. We're going to get to work. And don't forget, it's 2020, so wear your mask. Once you put in your hardener, you're supposed to shake this for two minutes <clears throat> or until your arms fall off. I'm not sure which one's going to happen first.
noise. The press is running, fans are going, torpedo heater is going. First coat's on, I clean the gun. I gotta give this about 30 minutes to dry, and then I can do the second coat. Now, for this particular wheelbase, I will tell you this, it took a liter and a half to make one coat, including the hood and both bumpers. That's a lot of material, okay? Um, if you're doing this, you're probably not gonna do your bumpers, but if you do, it's, you know, you know. So I'm gonna start with my open, uh, with my unopened one liter, and then if I need to, I can go to the other half liter as a reserve. Make sense? That way we're not wasting too much product. If we're gonna waste half a liter, well, let's just waste half a liter. <sighs> All right, I'm going outside. thing I got to work on is the mounting system. So I'm pretty much using what the original rooftop manufacturer, roof rack manufacturer had. Um, basically you have these little uh, wishbones. Now I had to re-drill the holes because this started off as a 10 foot piece, it's now down to 6 foot. But these are going to drop in here. And then these kind of sit off to the side. And when it's locked onto the truck, at least the way it was originally designed, is that it's not supposed to pull out. Now, I don't know how, but uh, to me, that ain't right. So these are going to go in. These are going to get fully welded. And the clamps that actually go to the gutter on the to the gutters on the van will clamp to these. All right. Probably be a lot easier to explain to you once you get it up there. So what I've done is I went ahead and prepped the metal. So I ground down the galvanization that's on here, all right? Uh, do not weld if there is galvanizing on there, all right? You will get sick, possibly die. I'm not joking. Uh, the other holes I have prepped to be filled in uh, that we're not going to be using, okay? And that's that. So now, get you guys set up over here. I'm going to put this up on the truck. And then we're going to put everything together. And we're going to see how high it sits. Now I have uh, a 2x10 in the center of the truck. And the reason for that is. I don't want this to sit too high off the top of the truck, okay? So I'm actually setting my own height with this. Um, so I may have to take those bars out and cut them down a little before they get fully welded in, but I know where I want the, where I want the rack to sit. So at this point, it's just a matter of oh, getting it up there. Okay. 
Dude, that's too high. I don't like it. All right, a little bit of cutting. All right, so looking at the top of the van, just to let you guys know what's going on here. So here's how this works. These wishbones sit down inside the gutter. This hook is supposed to go up here. This gets tightened up and gets cinched underneath the drip rail. So what the customer requested, and I don't blame them, is what I'm going to do is weld this hook directly to the rack because to me, that's kind of janky. Um, <clears throat> the last thing you want is your rack and all your stuff coming off while you're going down the road. So, now because I forgot to grind all that stuff off and prep it, I get to pull the rack off again. <laughs> then, I have to grind and prep and grind some more probably, put it back on the truck, get everything set, get it cinched down, and then I can do my tack welds. Oh yeah, and then take it off the truck again and fully weld it. So I'm not gonna borrow you with that or try to do the fast forward thing of me running up and down a ladder or moving this thing around with some funny music in the background. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this done. All right, so as you can see, I've got welding blanket up there, uh, welders next to the truck. I'm gonna go up there, make my tack welds, take the whole fucking thing off again, get down here, finish weld it, and then prep everything for coating. So the next time you'll see this is either after it's coated before it goes on the truck, or after it's on the truck and everything's already done. Depends on how I feel. But for now, uh, just enjoy me climbing up and down a ladder and, well, welding. Okay, and so all the parts are painted, everything is coated, everything's ready to go back on. The only thing we got left now is reassembly. So I'm gonna start with the front mud flaps, move to the rear mud flaps, and then for the last time that roof rack is going on. Uh, I also have to put the center caps back on the wheels after they're torqued. And we did something special with the center caps, and I'll show you that after they go on. So, uh, well, here I go. All right, gang, well, there you go. We're out here in uh, McCungy, Pennsylvania, just delivered the van back to the customer. Uh, him and his girlfriend are thrilled with the way it came out. We're, we're thrilled with the way it came out. Uh, just to recap, we had uh, rust on the front fender, rust on the rear quarter, fore and aft of the wheels. On the other side, we had rust fore and aft of the wheels. It's all cut out, replaced, and you know, you know, you know the drill. And then we had the roof rack here that we cut down uh, modified that to fit on the vehicle and that's up there and well everybody's happy so uh, well we got the 
money that was owed on it, and we're gonna go get some lunch now. Uh, appreciate you guys hanging out. You know where to find us on social media, uh, JSF uh, Fab LLC on Instagram, Jersey Shore Fabricators on Facebook, and of course, Jersey Shore Fabricators here on YouTube. Uh, like most other projects, this is something that you could do at home. If you don't want to do it or can't do it, feel, reach out, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to take care of it for you. Well, until then, enjoy what's left of this year. Be safe. Until we see you next time, peace.